After Action Report Texas 2023, we went down there. We had a pretty successful trip. We used a variety of broadheads and we promised an after action review because that's why you guys come back to this channel. Real honest observations come along. We're gonna break down the Schwacker. We're gonna break down the single bevel from Iron Will. It's a solid. We're also gonna break down our experience with the Sever 1.75. And finally, the Beast Broadhead. We're gonna break down what we love, what we didn't. And I wanna finish the video with a little rendition of what I like to call I'm picky when it comes to archery sites. Here's what I've liked. Here's what I don't like. Here's what I'm considering for 2024. Let's go. All right, first up to bat was a Havelina 31 yard spot and stock quartering away. Felt like I made a great shot. Single bevel, iron wheel, solid 125. To the left, my arrows clocked to the left. Arrow went through the Havelina, went 30 yards down the road. Uh, broadhead was in great condition after the shot. Havelina went 10 yards and expired, and we had an amazing blood trail in those short 10 yards. I've also used this broadhead on elk. I shot the bull in Utah. I shot the bull in Idaho from 2023, and in 2022, I shot a New Mexico bull with the Iron Will single bevel. Dude, it's awesome. It penetrates. It gives me warm fuzzies for frontals, quartering two, quartering away. I'm gonna get through this. I'm gonna get two holes, but it's pretty sharp. The bleeders aren't very big. It doesn't leave a lot of blood on the ground. So that's something to consider. You got pros and cons. I would recommend maybe going to an iron wheel wide, which I did shoot a whitetail in 2023 in Washington with the iron wheel wide. Entry exit hole was good. The animal went 60 yards. The blood trail was not as much as you'd like to see for a wide, but it did leave big holes. So if I am hunting elk, I am leaning towards an iron wheel wide, but we shall see. We have lots of time to test and tinker. I strongly encourage you to do the same. Only go to the field with what gives you the most confidence in your equipment, period. Let's move to the expandables. I'm not the biggest expandable mechanical dude. Haven't had great experiences elk hunting with them. So I won't use them on elk no matter how cool they are but I will take the time to break these down. Let's start with the next thing that I use, which is this bad boy. Look at that thing. This is the one I shot the Havelina with. It's still nasty. Um, let me fold it in so you guys can see what it looks like. So it does fly well like you would expect with any expandable. These little blades right here are what create your entry hole. You're not gonna get a huge entry hole. I don't care what anyone tells you, but you are gonna get an entry hole. Once you get past, the hide is definitely going to open up virgin heads. These are over two inches long and it's gonna devastate. It's gonna create a huge wound cavity, wound channel. You're gonna look for hemorrhage, blood leaving the container. Animals don't like that. They usually die when that happens. Exit hole, I don't know if you'll always get an exit hole. Let me explain to you what happened on the Havelina. It was a 41 yard shot. It went in, it hit a little high. It did, but it's still a good shot. It dropped the pig in its tracks and the veins caught on the exit. All right, so it was technically a pass through because the veins were holding it from going all the way out. The javelina went 20 yards. In that 20 yards, the arrow came out at about 10 yards. There was blood everywhere, especially on the exit side. We couldn't show you on video, we didn't even film it. There was its insides coming outside of the exit hole. This was by far the scariest, um, nastiest damage we saw on a Havelina, and the blood trail was good too. So if you're considering, I would say that was an amazing, wow, good job, Schwacker. But don't try to tell me it's gonna have a huge entrance hole because it probably isn't, but it could be good enough. And um, it's just really unique design. I was very impressed. Moving on. The next thing we shot was a doe that came into a feeder and there's wire around this feeder. And that is a hog wire to keep hogs from coming in. Deer can jump over, eat, jump and leave. This doe came in and she faced us for like 10 minutes, literally just eating all the corn. And I knew I wanted to shoot her because it was early in the hunt. And I wanted to save the last couple hours for in case a buck came in. Had it been last, 30 minutes a day, I wouldn't have shot her in hopes that a buck would show up. So once she finally gave me enough of a shot angle, I used this sever, 31 yard shot, and it was definitely quartering to, I wanna see what this thing could do. And I was impressed. So didn't get a lot of penetration, it hit the heart. She went 30 yards and died. But I wanna say it did break her shoulder blade literally in half. 
like her arm was dangling when we got to her. I know that's pretty graphic, but I'm just keeping it real. I like the materials. Uh, this It's titanium, it's chisel tip. I like that you can put a screw right in there and the blades won't open up. You can practice with the broadhead that you're going to use. Just don't forget to take that thread, that little screw out. It's a set screw for practice mode. Take it out, you're good to go. Put a new rubber band on. Um, this is the 175, so it's got a huge cutting diameter. And then these blades will lock. Once they lock, it will pivot, which is kind of a cool feature. They're sharp and you have the option of 1.5, a 175, which is this, and the 2.0. So this broadhead broke the scap, got in through the ribs, directly into the heart. I was impressed. Materials, it's solid, it flies well. This could be a great option. I know a lot of people have had great experiences and this is all they'll shoot. You still have people that'll say they'll never shoot this again. Everybody's different. So you're gonna have to figure out what works best for you. I would say the Sever is a phenomenal option. I love that it's titanium. I know that it's well made. It gives me a lot of good confidence for an expandable. Moving on. Next we have the Beast. So it comes with two, like a thumb and an index glove. Because if you don't use those, when these are out of the package, you will not be able to do this without cutting your fingers. This is by far the sharpest broadhead I've ever handled out of a package. And I mean ever. And I'm on year 23 of bow hunting, guys. So I don't know what process exactly they got going on. Something about cryogenic German engineering sharpening processes. This is the sharpest broadhead I've ever handled. The spring is super aggressive. Josh was saying something about the spring opening up at 750 miles an hour. All right, guys, so entrance and then exit. I don't know if that's true, but I know that they opened up upon entrance and they stayed open upon exit. I know that these can do something similar to the sever where one blade can go in and it can still pivot around bone, bone evading something, you'll have to look them up. And that may be true. Edge retention is also impressive. You could pick this up, like this one went through a deer. You could pick it up and shoot another deer right now. Um, I would wanna touch it up a little Here's bit. Entry on that Bomar beast. And then we exit it, so slightly quartering away. I was really, really, really impressed. If I were to pick any of these to maybe shoot an elk with, it might be this one, but I still wouldn't. I'd use the fixed broadhead because that's just what gives me the most confidence. And uh, yeah, I think they made a really good broadhead. I'm not sure of the aluminum ferrule. Uh, I thought, I heard that there might be coming out with some titanium ferrule options. The chisel tip is very good. Love the blade design. Don't love aluminum, would love to see titanium. I don't know what they're coming out with. I know that they're shipping soon. If you're in the market, I would give it a shot. It does come with a practice tip. So that's what we tested in 2023 Texas. So there is one expandable that I have yet to test. I have an eye out for that G5 Mega Meat. I've, I've seen good things, I wanna test that. All these are great options. All broadheads do their job. When you do your job, find a broadhead that does offer some sort of forgiveness in case maybe your arrow doesn't find its mark. Let's talk about archery sights just a little bit and where I'm at on my process. So I ran the UV three pin slider all of fall 2023. Very durable. The ergonomics as far as using it are better than everybody's in my opinion. Their pins are really bright when you have the light installed. If you don't, I think their pins are pretty dull. Their pen size is 0 0.015. I think that is a sweet spot, but guys at UV, I need your pens brighter. I can't use a light when I hunt Idaho. I gotta take that out and put just a vis ring in and that scope hallway darkens pens. Shout out to Thwack Bowhunting for the skin over the UV. Look him up, that's pretty cool. Some of you are gonna notice that and ask. He did a custom job. The dark owl, as you guys can see here, is on my Tetra Max. The Tetra Max comes with three indicators that I can adjust for my wheel, for my yardage. The three pins are vertical and they come to my dope. So I told Dark Owl my arrow speed and my measurement from my eyeball to my peep. And then those pins come to my, that gang matches my 20, 30, 40. Whereas UV sent me a prototype and it was fixed. So my top pin was 20, my second pin was 
37 and my third pin was 51. It's not ideal. I kind of like a 30, 40, 50 or a 20, 30, 40. So if you are gonna go three pin vertical, it is a beautiful sight picture. If you're used to horizontal, you do you. I've done both. I definitely gravitate towards that cleaner three pins. And I think three pins is the minimum you need for partying with elk because they move so much. You may have one at 20, he sees you, runs, you cow call, he stops 10, 12 yards later. You're not gonna have time to dial. So I really like having at least three, if not four pins for elk. That's a good practice that I stand behind. But as far as vertical pins go, you can look at the CBE Trek. I know Jeff, the camera guy's running that. Great option. So is Tyler from Elk Shape Gear. He's running that three pin CBE Trek. We'll do a video on that if we haven't already. And then we have the dialed site. I've done that. We're dialed. I ding dialed on their durability and they might have fixed that. I do think it wasn't as durable as I'd like. Uh, and the three pens are a beautiful sight picture, but they're fixed. So again, you may get 20, 39.5 and a 52 and a half for your pen gap. I really want to be in control of my pen gap. I know that's, don't you too? And the spot hog triple stack is just too big of a housing for my liking and it weighs too much. Lighten it up, get a smaller housing. That would be ideal. Black gold made a dual track. Love that site, but I need three pins. The two pin has cost me shot opportunities. I love black gold. If they made that dual track a triple track, you'd have my interest, maybe they will. So guys, bug these manufacturers. Let's get them to make what we want. If you're in the market, try a three pin vertical. I just went through several options. I don't have a winner for 2024 yet. You know we're gonna try our best, our darnest to figure that out. We're also gonna keep testing broadheads and we'll bring you along our journey. ABT always be tinkering does not mean change things to make a video. What it means is to pursue perfection where perfection cannot be perfected. That's archery, that's ABT. You have a lot of options when it comes to YouTube. Thanks for choosing us. Separations in the preparation. We'll catch you on the next one.